we're talking about taking care of business. Because if we don't take care of business, it'll come back against us and take care of us. I often preach about us standing up and taking care of business because I'm compelled to see something happen in situations that look like they're at a stalemate whether it's business or family or ministry, whatever it is, politics, someone has to stand up in every situation. Someone has to stand up. Now, if you're waiting for someone to tell you what to do, whether it's your pastor, your leader, you know, Jesus, your mom, whatever it may be, you're, you're not in a place of leadership. When Peter was part of the 120 in the upper room, and you think of these guys, Jesus told them to go there and stay there and says, wait until you're endued with power from on high. And uh, they were sitting there and, and they were waiting for this baptism of the Holy Spirit. They didn't know what it was, but it was going to come in a few days. And so as they're sitting there praying and, you know, they're in one accord, and all those kind of things but things are just kind of going along you know what that's like things are going along but Peter gets an idea from his perception of the Word of God and it says that Peter stood up and he says men and brethren this scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit spoke before by the mouth of David concerning Judas and he says you know Judas is gonna fall from his place someone else needs to be instated into that place and Peter perceived that something needed to be done here. Now, get a contrast here. There's a mentality that we see in many people that it's nice when Jesus comes and tells us what to do. But you know what? If you're relying on Jesus to come and tell you what to do, you're not a leader. But Peter perceived by his understanding and revelation in the Word of God something that needed to be done in this situation. Think of Moses back in the book of Exodus. He was running from Pharaoh. Do you know? And he came to the place where the priest of Midian's seven daughters came down to water their camels. And you remember what happened there? They're at the well. These girls come to the well. They dip the water. They put it in the troughs for the camels and then the sheep herders come and chase the girls away and the camels away and Moses is sitting there watching this and he thinks this isn't right and he says Moses stood up and he helped the girls he saw a situation where there is some injustice where there's something going wrong that needs to be fixed when something has to happen he says Moses just stood up and took care of business and you see this standing up in this simple situation where something needs to be done opens up up a whole new chapter and a whole new blessing in Moses life you and I need to look at situations around us and decide you know what I'm gonna be the one who stands up I'm gonna be the one who takes leadership we need strong leaders to take us through into the victory and the purpose to fulfill the purpose that God has on us as the kingdom and the body of Christ in this day we need very very strong and assertive faith-filled leaders don't just be waiting around for Jesus to tell you what to do. You know, he told them in Acts, he said, John baptized with water, but you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit in not many days from now. And he says to them, it is not for you to know or to fuss about or to think about or worry about the times and the seasons that God has put in his own hand. Don't worry about all those lame excuses. The timing of God. I don't know what God wants me to do. Forget all that. Leaders are people like Peter who stood up. He said, you'll receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come on you and you will be witnesses. You will be. See, when the power of the Holy Spirit comes on you, when the perception of the Word of God comes on you, when this gospel is in your heart, you will be, you will stand up. You'll do what needs to be done in the situation. Are you ready to stand up? Let's stand up today and assertively lead the body of Christ, lead the people of God into where we need to be. Well, I'm here at the Lethbridge dump. Oh, no, no. This is the Lethbridge landfill. And uh, I'm not dumping garbage. I'm dumping fill for our landfill. And obviously, the fill here that we're dumping is very valuable because we're having to pay $45 a ton to dump this. Well, to me, it's garbage, and it's worth $45 a ton to get rid of it. But you know what? We're talking today about standing up and about taking care of business. As leaders, we need to make sure that we're not men pleasers, but we are really taking care of business. So we're confronting things that need to be confronted because underlying every problem is, is a root problem that wants to grow and wants to spread and wants to spring up like some of these trees in other places, you know? You got a big tree over here and all of a sudden it's having a baby over there. And that's the way problems are if we leave them underground. We got to bring them up to the surface, call them what they are and deal with them. Pastor Rich sent me an excerpt this week 
out of Lee Iacocca's new book called Where Have All the Leaders Gone? And Lee Iacocca was the guy who took over Chrysler Motors when it was going bankrupt some 20 years ago and reorganized that whole company and brought it back to a flourishing, profitable company. And of course, Chrysler is not profitable again anymore. Lee Iacocca is now 82 years old and he's writing this book and he says, where is our outrage at the things that are going wrong in America, in business, in the world, in politics? Where's our outrage? Who is going to stand up? Where are the people that can change things? We got leaders who are kept down by this idea of popularity and pleasing men. Tell you what, if as a leader you're doing things, you're saying things, you're laying strategies to gain popularity, you're not a leader. You're going to miss it totally because God needs people who can stand up, call things what they are, and deal with them in a way that brings a defeat to the enemy and brings victory to your leadership and to your team. If real leaders don't stand up, who's going to stand up? Maybe nobody, maybe somebody, maybe the wrong person. We need to be able to identify the enemy and bring a blow, bring a defeat to the plans and the strategies of the enemy. You know, in the news this week also we're hearing a lot about Pakistan and India. Pakistan and India have been at loggerheads for so many years fighting over some disputed territory. And Pakistan leaders, in their desire to use the enemy a kind of as a tool against India has allowed some of these militant Taliban groups to flourish in some of the rural areas of Pakistan because they would bring terrorist attacks against India. Well now Pakistan is saying, you know what, we have a common enemy because the Taliban has moved in. They tried to make some concessions in the Swat Valley. They said, okay, Taliban, we'll give you this uh, Swat Valley and then you'll stop fighting us and as soon as they moved into the Swat Valley they took up arms and they began to push farther in toward Islamabad and so on. But I tell you what, you can't give room to terrorists. You can't give room to your enemies. You've got to stop them in their tracks. And finally, Pakistan is seeing that Pakistan and India have a common enemy. Now they're out to kill some of these terrorists and we're going to see some great results out of that. But as long as there's that wishy-washy, compromising, you know, mamby-pamby, sissy kind of an attitude, we're doing what we can for our popularity and trying to be nice to everybody forget it you and I need to stand up where is our outrage where is the determination we're gonna put a stop to the things that are hurting our leadership a stop to the things that are hurting people we recognize our enemy we got a devil out there that's trying to destroy people and you and I have the responsibility to stand up and do whatever it takes to put that enemy to death we are out to kill the terrorists from the kingdoms of hell and bring the light of the glorious gospel of Christ into the nations around the world. Somebody has to stand up, don't compromise, deal with things, confront them. Not hurting people, but we need to see that they and us have a common enemy and we're gonna stand up and take care of that enemy. We're gonna deal with that enemy on their behalf. Well, again, we need to perceive what the Word of God says so that we can apply the promises of God and the judgment of God, the justice of God, to the situation around us. And we can look and say, you know what? That's not right. It's not right that those kids are left orphaned. And so we'll stand up and we'll do something. We'll find a way because we see that there's a cause. Like David said, is there not a cause? You need to look around. You need to see the cause, see the promises of the Word of God. And let's apply these promises and see the situation around us change. The issue is that it's not about me. I don't want anybody to stand up to make my leadership easier, to make me a better leader. I want you to stand up in your situation. And when we cast that kind of a vision, that this stand up kind of leadership is not about growing my leadership ability or my influence or any of those things. It's a focus on what needs to be done and we stand up and do it for the sake of the people that need to have it done for them. When you and I will walk like that, we'll have no trouble casting vision. People watch to see what we do and they'll rise to the challenge. They'll be looking for the people around them that they can stand up and help.